Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. In today's video, we are going over the brand Biosans. I'm going to be telling you a little about the brand, talking about my experiences, and then ranking all of the products that I've tried from best to worst. Of course, I am coming to you guys barefaced today to show you my results of using the brand Biosans. But in this particular case, this video is a, a, a bare minimum of two weeks of usage. Some of these products I've been using for a lot longer than that. And let's be real about how long I've been raving about squalene as an ingredient on this channel, the basis of the Biosans brand. But let's actually start there. Let's start with some backstory on the Biosans brand, what they're doing with squalane. And if you're interested in just a particular section of this video, just a particular product, check the description box for timestamps. So of course the basis for this brand is an ingredient known as squalane. And squalane is a very interesting ingredient. Your body produces something called squalene with an E. Squalane with an A is the hydrogenated form of squalene, which makes it much more stable, much less prone to oxidizing, and yet still very structurally similar to our squalene, so that our bodies are, are, are very cool with squalene coming in. They don't really freak out. I know that sounds like I might be making a joke, but I'm actually very serious. It's important for your body to accept the skincare that you apply to it. If it doesn't know what to do with it, if it's freaking out about ingredients you're applying, it might go into you know pro-inflammation mode, which is potentially how you end up getting skin reactions. That ultimately makes it a really good emollient for all skin types, even the most sensitive or reactive. There's just virtually no risk of an allergic reaction. A very strong statement, so I will have a citation in the description box below. Also a zero on the comedogenesis scale, just a really, really good choice of an ingredient. And as far as the brand, they are a vegan and cruelty-free brand with a heavy emphasis into sustainability by using ingredients such as sugarcane, which is much more renewable. Uh, they use carbon neutral packaging. And of course, one of their biggest selling points is that they are a clean brand. They claim non-toxic, paraben-free, phthalate-free, etc. To be honest with you, I very much respect the clean world. I've talked about this a lot. I did grow up in a clean household, uh, but I'm not, I, it's just not the biggest selling point for me personally. What I would ultimately say is, again, I still respect that world. I think that it is a very good idea to question the safety of your ingredients, to question the efficacy of your products. But at the same time, I would always tell you, probably go a little bit above and beyond what a brand is saying as they might potentially have a bias towards their own products and you know go on PubMed, use the MSDS to verify the safety of ingredients and form your own opinions at the end of the day. I will link you guys to a video by Rick Skin if you are interested more into this discussion. He has an entire video talking about just that, whereas I would like to spend more of this video talking about my experience and my thoughts on the products themselves. So let's get into that next. Overall, I've just got to say, I've really had a good experience with Biosans. You know, I started small. I started with only their squalane, and now I have how many products? I haven't counted. I have a lot of products next to me to talk about. And honestly, out of everything I've tried, I think there's really only one product in this whole video that I don't think you should buy. And even with that one product, it's, it's debatable, it's debatable. So let's get into these product reviews and let's start with my absolute top three, the products that I will most likely be repurchasing for a long time to come. Number one has got to be none other than their 100% squalane oil, of course. I'm just gonna be 100% honest with you that this was the first product I bought from this brand and I would not have bought it if they didn't drop the price. Originally, I thought the price on this particular product was too high. It was really hard not to think that when comparing that to the Ordinary's Squalane price and then even the Inky List came out with a $10 Squalane. So I, I very much think it was wise of Biosans to drop the price of this and get people like me who were otherwise skeptics initially to give it a try. Because fact is, this is actually different from the Ordinary, the Inky Lists, 
squalanes. And the very simple reason for this is that Biosensa squalane is 100% derived from sugarcane, whereas the ordinary and the inky list is 100% plant derived. May sound very similar, and certainly neither of those are shark derived, but by leaving it open ended, by just saying, well, it's plant derived. The Ordinary and the Inky List have made it so that they can pull whatever ingredient is currently cheapest and use that in their products and help keep their prices low. I've seen a lot of conversations about is there really a difference between Biosansa Squalane versus the Ordinaries, and, and yes, there is, because ultimately, even though you end up with the same ingredient, when you process these from their original source, uh, be that from beets, olives, or from sugarcane, you will end up with some amount of byproducts. And of course, this is going to vary. With sugarcane, it's not as much. I believe it is only around 5%, whereas with some other sources, it could be up to 18%. And those byproducts actually could affect your skin. That is why it is still possible for there to be an allergic type of potential with squalane, but it's not really the squalane, it's the byproducts. So it kind of frustrates me when I see people say things like, oh, the ordinary squalane broke me out because it's not really the squalane that causes breakouts in any way. However, the byproducts actually could. So, you know, we are talking about a product that is a little tiny bit more expensive than the ordinaries, but price per ounce, not really that big of a difference. And yet there is a difference in the amount of potential impurities. Plus, as goofy as this sounds, the pump is way worth it. The pump is way worth it. I'm just telling you guys exactly like it is. Save two seconds of your life every single day by not messing with a dropper. There you go. That is my favorite selling point of this product. I'm kidding because I really do think the impurity factor is something very important in this situation. And I think that's why there are some people who have said, oh, actually, I did break out with the Ordinary's squalling, but I, I don't break out with Biosances. Well, basically, all I can tell you guys, you know, I don't really like to tell you, oh, you guys have to buy this. But I will tell you, I am a tremendous fan of squalling. I think it is an excellent addition to your skincare routine in particular during the day. You know, I have my face completely smothered in squalene right now, and I feel like I'm, I'm not too shiny. My second favorite, my product that I think is Biosance's second best product, at least from what I've tried, is the Squalene and Probiotic Gel Moisturizer. Now, I bought the small size of this, the travel sizes. I don't think these are available on the Sephora site, but you can get this from Biosance Direct for $16. See, the thing is, I do have a more dry skin type, and pretty much as a consistent life rule, gel moisturizers are usually made with oily skin in mind, which means when I see that word on a moisturizer, I'm usually like, oh, I'm probably not going to love it, even if I do, which is the case with this, even if I do think, oh, those ingredients are absolutely gorgeous. No irritants, no fragrance. This looks amazing. But see, I underestimated this because I love squalane as an ingredient. You've picked up on this by this point in this video. So of course, I still love this incredibly lightweight moisturizer, and I actually think it's been fantastic in these warmer months. I am very impressed with this. And one more thing, since this contains probiotics and yet doesn't contain fragrance, finally, I can tell those of you that avoid fragrance in your products that this is a, a perfect way to test out probiotics and see if they work for you. I've talked a lot about why I love probiotics in my skincare. You know, the basic principle of them is that you have both this good and bad bacteria on your face. When you wash your face, you're washing away both the good and the bad. So if you add probiotics back into your skincare routine, you're getting the benefits that you get from those good bacteria, which in this case means anti-inflammation, helpful for acne prone skin. Really as a rule, anything that is anti-inflammatory is helpful for acne as acne is inflammation and anybody who has a, a red bump with the inflammation around it can tell you that. I do feel like there's always some amount of controversy around probiotics and skincare because when you buy probiotics uh, to take as a supplement, they are of course living, but when you buy them in your skincare, they are not living since you have to have preservatives in the product. That doesn't actually mean that you don't get the benefits though. You still get the benefits from dead bacteria. Bottom line with this, I really think this is actually a moisturizer for all skin types. And I, I, I never say that. I never say that because how can you have a moisturizer for both dry skin and oily skin? They need such different things. And yet this one is so balanced for the skin. It's going to be especially helpful if you do deal with acne. 
it is very well made. And next up, the Squalane and Zinc Sheer Mineral Sunscreen. Oh, I knew I was gonna love this. This is one of those that I kept adding in my cart and taking out because of the price, but I knew I was gonna love it. And sure enough, I truly think this is my favorite sunscreen for in particular dry skin. But funny enough, that's the same reason I didn't rate it above the probiotic moisturizer, which I think is for all skin types. This one does look really quite dewy on the skin, and yet it is a mineral filter sunscreen, which is very helpful if you do have a chemical filter allergy like myself. It's also 100% zinc, not everybody wants titanium dioxide in their SPF. I mean, it's, it's just absolutely beautiful. Buffs into the skin so nicely. The, really the only con with this is that it could be too potentially greasy looking on more oily skin types and also the price is really high for the amount you get. It's really a pricey sunscreen. Stay on my lips this time. So the next four products I'm going to talk about I really, really do like, but whether I will repurchase them or not is, is pretty debatable. So let's just start with the Squalene and Vitamin C Rose Oil. I bought this in the Radiant Rose Duo off the Sephora website. Uh, so this is the one that I actually have on my face right now. There really are some things that I really like about this. We've got a really short ingredients list on this product and they're using tetrahexyl desyl ascorbate, which is an oil soluble form of vitamin C and of course the wisest form to put into an oil. It is also much less sensitizing on the skin than L ascorbic, which has to be at a low pH and can be pretty it can be pretty uncomfortable to apply. Whereas with this, no discomfort whatsoever. I also do feel that THD ascorbate is a very good form for anti-aging purposes. Uh, but I have some cons with this as well. First off, the price on this is, is really high. They were able to drop the price on the squalane, which of course made me buy it. But this one is still, I believe 74, 74 for an ounce. It's pretty pricey to put in a little bit of THD ascorbate. And again, I really wouldn't call this fragrance free. I mean, it technically is, the word fragrance doesn't appear, but it does contain geraniol and citronellol, which of course are essential oil ingredients. So it's probably not going to work for everybody, but I think it's going to work for a lot of people. And I think you're probably going to see quite a bit of brightening with you certainly smoothing simply from the squalane hydration. So I do like it. I just think it's a little pricey for what it is. And I'm gonna talk about the two eye products together. We have the Squalane and Marine Algae Eye Cream as well as the Squalane and Peptide Eye Gel. I, I suspect that these are really formulated with different skin types in mind. Again, like I was saying about the gel moisturizer, the gel is much more lightweight, probably better for oily eyelids, whereas the eye cream is much thicker. Of course, I'm sure you can guess which one I prefer, right? But I want to rank this without my bias, which is why I'm just grouping them together. You know, again, I think with either one of these, I think you'll be very pleased. I've been, what I've been doing is using the eye gel during the day, really nice daytime uh, eye cream. And then at night, I've been using the marine algae eye cream. But if you guys know me, it is just so hard for me to sit here and say, oh yeah, you should definitely buy the peptide eye gel, which is over $50 when I just found Huh, that one from e.l.f., the e.l.f. CBD eye cream, which I cannot stop raving about. Oh lord, how many videos have I put this in? Anyway, let me get back to Biosans here. You know, I really do think it's a great eye product. I just, again, I think it's a bit pricey. And yet I don't actually feel that with the eye cream, again, potentially because my bias is playing into it but also because even though it is a thicker texture, it is extremely easy to shear this eye cream out. And today, that's exactly what I did. I took the tiniest amount of this eye cream. I have it all over both of my eyes and it's perfect for daytime use if you do that and then you could apply it more thick at night if you so desire. So I, I feel like, I mean, I, I really do prefer the Marine Algae Eye Cream just because to me it seems very flexible. 
in certain cases, you try some of these eye creams and you, you really, you can't shear them out. They're just very thick. Looking at you, Kiehl's, love that eye cream, but it is very thick. Whereas with this, you really can. And such an absolutely gorgeous ingredients list on, in particular, that eye cream. I really do love the addition of marine algae. I've had really good results myself with algae. I feel like it is a very smoothing ingredient. We've got peptides in here as well. No irritants in this product. And I do want to make sure I talk about the ingredients of the peptide eye gel as well. You know, it really does look great. It looks excellent. No added irritants, no fragrance, no essential oils. This one does contain some caffeine, which is excellent for any puffiness around the eye area. So again, I think either one of them are excellent choices. They're just a little bit pricey. The Squalene and Lactic Acid Resurfacing Night Serum Facial Serum with 10% vegan lactic acid exfoliate skin overnight. So I only have a sample size of this, but I, I will honestly tell you, uh, of course I like it. This is, is very consistent for me. I like lactic acid products a lot more than glycolic, just as a general rule. I love Sunday Riley's Good Jeans. I love the new toner from Youth to the People. So unsurprisingly, I do really like this but it does contain some lavender and some essential oil ingredients. This is going to be fine for the vast majority of people. Uh, however, when it comes to lavender in particular, that one actually, uh, that's a pretty common allergen as far as things, as far as allergies are concerned. So I think, you know, I think this will be game changing for some people. And I think some people will be wondering, you know, why do I have tiny bumps after using this? It's going so well for so many other people. That's simply because of the allergic potential of lavender, but that, that's, that's one reason number one of two as far as why I don't see myself repurchasing the full size. And it's just really simply that probably one of my most repurchased products is the Ordinary's Lactic Acid 10%. No, it is not as cosmetically elegant as this, but it is absolutely a fraction of the price and very similar in results. You can certainly use that overnight and then add a little bit of squalene on top. It's very, very similar results, let me tell you. But again, good product. And if you have more money than I do, then you know, good for you. I'm really happy to hear that. Let's move on to the products that I definitely don't see myself repurchasing. I'm just gonna group together everything I bought in the tea tree trio kit, but again, with a giant disclaimer here, Th these products contain not just tea tree oil, which not everybody can use, but in addition to that, they put lavender in these products. Okay, have you guys ever seen the movie Uncle Buck? True story, that is absolutely one of my favorite movies of all time. Grew up with that movie, watched it so many times I have it memorized. Come on, John Candy, come on. There is a scene in that movie where Macaulay Culkin goes, ugh, he put onions in the eggs. And that phrase gets stuck in my head every time I see an ingredient that I don't wanna see in my skincare products, ugh. They put lavender in my tea tree oil. And we already covered the potential problem with that. Again, it's gonna be fine for some people, but if you have an allergy and some percentage of people will, then you could end up having an allergic reaction. And people don't always know, uh, you know, that what looks like acne could actually be an allergic reaction instead. So it ends up a very confusing situation. But all that said, I, I can still rank these very easily. So my, my favorite of the tea tree is the tea tree cleansing gel. It's a fine gel. It's certainly not too drying and gels can sometimes be a little more drying. This one is definitely not. You certainly do smell the tea tree in here and it's a wash off product. So I'm less concerned about the lavender as well as the essential oil ingredients. And then the squalane and tea tree detox mask. I actually really like this as far as masks are concerned. It's not a drying one. I, I really, I'm not much of a clay mask person in the first place, but the drying clay masks on my dry skin are not pleasant. This one is not drying. It's a 10 minute mask that will give you the benefits of a clay mask, probably very nice for oily skin types and yet not too drying that it will dry out your skin. So yeah, I really do like it. 10 minutes, wash it off. 
uh, you know, not as worried about the essential oils in here, and yet you are still leaving them on for 10 minutes, which is why I ranked the cleanser higher. And I'm sure it goes without saying that just because I'm, I'm making this video with an abundance of caution, the Levon product is the one that I'm ranking last, and yet to be honest with you, it actually has been going well for me, so do keep that in mind. Oh my gosh, am I about to make this video and get this far into talking about tea tree without telling you what tea tree does? So whenever we're talking about the mechanism of an ingredient, you know, what an ingredient does, whether it's an antioxidant, whether it's antibacterial, there's always kind of a, a range of the potency of that ingredient. And in the case of tea tree, it is an antimicrobial ingredient and extremely high on the potency scale. Tea tree oil is very, very antimicrobial to a level where if you have pets, you might wanna be extra careful about your tea tree usage. I know there can be an issue with having cats and using tea tree oil. So, you know, it's really something where you have to be cautious about it. That's really gonna be beneficial if you have acne as the antibacterial activity can help to kill off the bacteria that is acne. Another use of tea tree that I really don't hear about too often is that it can be really helpful for an overgrowth of demodex. And demodex are those, uh, I, I think they're technically arachnids that live inside your hair follicle. They, they sleep inside your hair follicle during the day. And then at night they come out and have wild parties on your face. I wonder if people don't talk about this because it sounds made up. Does it sound made up? It almost does. Yeah, you have face spiders that party on your face, but I'm not making this up. I am so serious. But yeah, an overgrowth of the face spiders can obviously be very detrimental for the skin. So tea tree oil is one of the most commonly used treatments for Demodex overgrowth. I really only have two products that I'm putting in my worst category. And I, I just, I have to be honest with you that the Rose Vegan Lip Balm is really disappointing to me personally. I had to reapply it to finish this video. It just, it just disappears. At the same time, I kind of feel that maybe I shouldn't be that hard on this product because something I've noticed is that it seems to be extremely difficult to formulate a vegan lip balm. Almost always my favorites are not vegan, and yet I do know that some people are looking for vegan lip balms. So, you know, it's completely possible that you could very much disagree with me and enjoy this. But again, for me, I just need a lip balm that lasts for longer than 10 minutes. And, and that's, that's, that, that's it. That's my simple problem with this is I don't know where it goes. It seems like it evaporates. And then the squalene and vitamin C rose mask. There's really a part of me that feels like this should not be the last product in this video. And yet I am sorry, but I need to put it last. So this mask, in theory, sounds like an excellent mask. It's an L ascorbic mask. You know, you put the L ascorbic on, it's going to sting as L ascorbic does, but then you wash it off and go about your day. Sounds great in theory. However, when I tried this, I was merely a couple minutes in and I was noticing, I've only used this once, I was noticing, oh my gosh, my skin is still stinging. You're supposed to leave this on for 15 minutes, but when my skin started singing, you know, I just have a sample. So I went on the Sephora website, I was reading the reviews, and I noticed that all of the most recent reviews are all one star, and it was all people saying the exact same experience that I was noticing in this moment. <laughs> I'm sitting there with my face feeling like it's on fire, reading people saying this stings so much, it stung into the next day. And I'm, I'm thinking, okay, you know what? <laughs> we're gonna wash this off. Five minutes into this thing, we're gonna wash it off. You guys, my skin was awful in the early phases of this lockdown. I'm finally happy with it. I do not want a sample product to mess it up. So I washed it off, finished my skincare routine, and sure enough, my skin was still stinging. It hurt for the rest of the day. I woke up with some bumps the next day and I'm just thinking, what happened with this product? What is it with me and masks? It's always masks that give me disastrous results. Anyway, so I went back on the website, the Sephora website the next day, and I was reading through more and more of the reviews and it really got me questioning if this is a situation of bad batch theory. I was noticing that this is out of stock and I just started wondering, oh, is this, is this a bad batch? Is that what happened here? Because if you go back farther, this product has a lot of five-star reviews. So again, I cannot prove anything. This is just my theory. I had a very bad experience with this. Uh, but again, some people said this is an absolutely incredible mask. 
So maybe they're uh, adjusting things with it and it will come back in stock and be, you know, the, the same mask that gave people the five star results. Or, or maybe my skin just really hated this as well as the last couple of reviewers. I don't know, but for the time being, I'm just pretty uncomfortable with recommending in any capacity a product that caused that reaction. But that is it. I've come to the end of all of the Biosance products that I have tried. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? And of course, if you guys did find this video helpful, please do make sure to give it a like, hit subscribe, and I will see you all next time.